So you got a settings menu complete with key binding, video and audio settings. And now it's time to save that and load it back up when the game restarts. And that can be a formidable task, I feel you man. But with Godot's config file API, it's downright trivial. And you get a nice cine file with all your settings. Now we're cooking. These are the secrets of config file saving. Let's go though. I have a Discord server now. More at the end of the video. There are two methods for saving in Godot. Saving game state in a .save file using file access. It should be used for saving progress, high score, player health, etc. And saving configurations in a .cfg or .ini file using config file for saving key bindings and all other kinds of settings. And we're gonna be using config file for saving user settings, just to get that out of the way. Let's start by creating a new script and calling it config file handler. This is going to be a singleton, so we have to go into project, project settings, auto load tab, and click on the folder icon to load the script. Then click on add, and now this script is available from every other script in the project. In the script, we're going to make a variable config and initialize it to config file.new. We're going to use this config to read, write, and save the configuration ini file. And this is what our ini file will look like. It has section names in square brackets and key value pairs saved as plain text. There's a bunch of key bindings, full screen and screen shake video settings and audio settings for master and sound effect volume. This is just an example of what your settings might look like. We'll save this file at the path user colon slash slash settings dot ini, which will be located in different places depending on your operating system. So make a constant variable called file path and set it to user colon slash slash settings dot ini. Of course, before we save anything, this file doesn't exist and trying to read it would result in an error. Let's write a default file in the ready function. First checking if not file access dot file exists, passing in the file path. We can start by writing key binding settings. Write config dot set value and pass in the section key binding. Then I'm gonna go through my input map settings and write an action, move left, and the value which is going to be the keyboard key bound to that action, in quotation marks A. And just repeat this for every key binding you wish to save. Since I have the shoot action bound to left mouse button, let's call that mouse underscore 1. If it was right click, we'd put mouse underscore 2 and so on. Let's move on to the video section, where we do the same thing but change the section to video. For full screen we can set true and for screen shake we can set false. Finally the audio section where we're going to set both master volume and SFX volume to 1.0. Now saving the file is as easy as calling config.save and passing in the config file path. Run the game once so config file handler makes the file. And if you open up the folder where game data is saved on your computer, you'll find settings.ini. And yep, it's all there. Back in the script, we have to handle the situation where the file already exists, because we don't want to override it. So that's gonna be else, and we're gonna write config.load and pass in the settings file path. Now let's implement saving and loading video settings. And you'll see how easy it really is. Make a function called save video setting which will take in a key of type string and a value. Same as in the ready function, we're gonna call config.setValue, pass in the video as the section name, the key and the value. Then we're gonna call config.save and pass in settings file path. And that's it for saving. Now let's make a function called load video settings, make a variable video settings and initialize it to an empty dictionary, a pair of curly braces. We're gonna loop through all the keys in the video section of the settings file by writing for key in config.getSectionKeys and passing in the section name, which is video. Then we're going to write video settings, square brackets key, equals config.getValue and pass in the section name video and key. In the end, just return video settings. And much in the same way, we're also going to implement saving and loading audio settings. So make a function save audio setting, which takes in key of type string and a value. Write config.set value, passing in the audio as the section, key and the value. Then write config.save and pass in settings file path. 
and same as before make a function load audio settings we're going to make our var audio settings equals an empty dictionary for key in config.get section keys audio audio settings at the index key equals config.get value audio key and return audio settings I have the settings menu seen here with a couple of checkboxes for the full screen and the screen shake settings and a couple of sliders for the master volume and the SFX volume. To make this menu update the settings file I'm going to connect a couple of signals. So I'm going to choose the full screen checkbox, go into the node tab on the right and find the toggled signal. Double click it and press connect and it makes a new callback function in my script. Right away I'll also select the screen shake checkbox and connect its toggle signal in the same way. Now these callback functions have a toggled on parameter passed in which we can use to change the settings. So we're gonna write config file handler dot save video setting full screen and pass in toggled on. And for the screen shake callback similarly config file handler dot save video setting screen shake toggled on. I'm gonna go back into the scene and select the master volume slider and connect the drag ended signal. I'll also select the SFX volume slider and connect the drag ended signal as well. Drag ended signal callbacks get a value changed parameter which we can use by checking if value changed in which case we're going to write config file handler dot save audio setting master volume and since our slider goes from 0 to 100 and our master volume is saved from 0 to 1 we're going to write master volume slider dot value over 100 and it's going to be the same thing for the sfx volume slider so if value changed config file handler dot save audio setting sfx volume sfx volume slider dot value over 100 at this point saving the settings works but let's see how we can load these settings. We're going to do that in the ready function. We're going to write var video settings equals config file handler dot load video settings. I'm gonna write full screen checkbox, which is the checkbox node I got from the scene up here in the on ready var full screen checkbox line. I'm gonna change its button pressed property to video settings dot full screen which will make this checkbox checked in the case when video settings full screen is true. Then I'll write screen shake checkbox, which I also got up there in the on ready var screen shake checkbox line. And I'm going to change its button pressed property to video settings dot screen shake. Then let's get the audio settings by writing var audio settings equals config file handler dot load audio settings. Then I'll get the master volume slider, which I also got from the scene dot value is equal to minimum between audio settings dot master volume and 1.0 and multiply all that by 100. This is again because we save our audio settings from 0 to 1 and our slider goes from 0 to 100. And finally I'll set the sfx volume slider dot value to a minimum between audio settings dot sfx volume and 1.0 and all that multiplied by 100. So now we have saving and loading of video and audio settings, but now let's get into something a bit more difficult, which is going to be key bindings. We're back in the config file handler script and we're going to create a new function called save key binding, which is going to take an action of type string name and an event of type input event. We're going to define a variable called event underscore str, which is going to be the string which we will save into the settings file. We have to check if event is input event key, in which case we just want to save the string representation of that key. So event string is going to be os.getKeyCodeString and we're going to pass in event.physicalKeyCode. Elif, we're going to check if event is input event mouse button, in which case event string is going to be mouse underscore and to that we will append the string of event.buttonIndex. Then we can write the old reliable config.set value, passing in the section key binding, action, and event string. And of course, config.save, passing in settings file path. Then let's make a function load key bindings, and we're going to create var key bindings equals empty dictionary, 
var keys equals config.getSectionKeys with the section being key binding. We will loop through all the keys by writing for key in keys and at this point we will do an inverse of what we were doing when we were saving key bindings. We'll take a string which represents an event and we'll create an actual event from it. Make a var input event which will eventually hold the actual event and a var event str which is going to be config.getValue key binding key. We're going to check if event underscore str dot contains mouse underscore in which case input event is going to be input event mouse button dot new. And we also have to set input events button index to an integer of event string dot split around the underscore character and indexing that at the index one. So as you can imagine, if we had a string mouse underscore zero, we split that around the underscore character, leaving us with two strings mouse and zero. We then take the one at the index 1, which is going to be the string 0, and convert it into an integer. Else, if the event string does not contain the string mouse underscore, input event is going to equal to input event key dot new. And we're going to set input events key code to os dot find key code from string and pass in event string. Then outside of the else, but still inside the for loop, we're going to write key bindings square brackets key equals input event. And now outside of the for loop, we're going to return key bindings. With this now you can save, you can load your key bindings, you can make your menu however you want. However, if you watched my input settings menu video, which you should check out right now if you haven't, I'll show you how to adjust the code from there to use this tech to save your key bindings. Ok, so now we're in the input settings.gd script, which is just how we left it after the last video. We only have to make a few adjustments, starting with the ready function. Before create action list, call underscore load key bindings from settings. Then let's make the function load key bindings from settings and make a var key bindings equals config file handler dot load key bindings. Let's make a for loop for action in key bindings dot keys input map dot action erase events action input map dot action add event action key bindings square brackets action. This will load the key bindings and then delete the default events from the actions loaded and replace them with the loaded events. In the function create action list, we just want to remove the first line input map dot load from project settings. In the input function, right after we call input map dot action add event, we also want to save that key binding. So for that, we'll call config file handler dot save key binding and pass in action to remap and event. And lastly, we will change the on reset button pressed function. First, we'll call input map dot load from project settings. Then we'll loop for action in input actions var events equals input map dot action get events and pass in action. We'll check if events dot size is greater than zero. And if it is, we want to overwrite the settings key bindings with the default key bindings from the input map. So we'll call config file handler dot save key binding, pass in the action and events at the index zero. I'll run the game now and when I open the pause menu you can see the default video and audio settings and also the default key bindings. I'll change some of these settings around and I'll rebind the interaction key from E to Q. I'll close the game and open it back up and there we go, the settings were successfully saved and loaded. I have a Discord server now and it's a great place to keep up with the channel and the community, get help with coding issues, suggest new content and show off your work. Plus, if the channel still has less than 5000 subs at the time you're watching this, you get a special pioneer role, so everyone will know you're an OG. Link is in the pinned comment. Hope to see you there.